course there it's right that uh, there should be an investigation into any allegations of bullying. That's what the Cabinet Office is doing. That's what Sir Alex Allen will, of course, be doing. But I just remind him, since he mentions uh, the Home Secretary, that she is keeping this country safe by putting in record numbers of police officers. She believes in stopping the early release of offenders, and she's, a, she's bringing in a system to tackle our migration crisis with an Australian-style points-based system. And he would scrap he would scrap stop and search. Uh, he, he believes in getting rid of our security services, and he certainly wouldn't uh, tackle our immigration system, Mr. Speaker. That is the question from a, a, uh, a full time neo Marxist who's, <laughs> who's, who's, who's failed to stamp out bullying in his own party. And actually, I'm, I'm very proud, as I say, of the record uh, of this government just over the last 82 days. Uh, we've uh, taken back control of our borders, our laws, and our money. We've got Brexit done. Uh, we've set out a new, a new points based immigration system. We've put more money into people's pockets through the biggest ever increase in the living wage. Uh, we've guaranteed more funding for schools by increasing the minimum funding uh, for, uh, for, for every pupil. We've restored the nurses' bursary, introduced a bill to set in a record cash boost for our NHS and ensure there will be a free hospital car parking for everybody who attends a hospital. And we're delivering gigabit broadband for the entire country. That's just to say nothing of the police that we're recruiting, Mr. Speaker. That's just in the last 82 days. We're getting on with delivering the people's priorities. So just the other day, we had Marc Francois and Michael Gove defending Priti Patel. And now we have the Prime Minister defending Priti Patel. So I'd like to know why Boris Johnson is jumping to her defence. Why is she still there? She's a liability. She's a problem for the government because you're going to see more and more cases coming forward against Priti Patel and then she'll have to resign eventually. Why is Boris Johnson holding on to her now? You know, I understand that it's, it's a situation where he's probably going to have to fire her at some stage or she's going to have to resign at some stage. It would be better to have it sooner rather than later because at least when she's out, She's no longer uh, creating noise and creating a distraction for the government. You know, it's, f it's fine and dandy for Boris Johnson to point the finger at the other side. But the narrative at the moment is there's a problem with Priti Patel. So it doesn't matter what Boris Johnson says in response to this. So <laughs> the focus in the media and politically is on Priti Patel. So she was a focal figure for a period of time that went away. Now she's back in the focus again. And many more people are asking, why does she still work there? Why does she still have a job? What is it about her? What is her behavior in respect to her colleagues and her staff? Now, I think Boris Johnson is in some trouble with her. I think maybe she has some dirt on him or something like this. She knows too much and that's why she's she's still in her position or maybe it's just incompetence or lack of foresight in on behalf of Boris Johnson he's not willing to to let her go because he doesn't understand um, the role you know a, a person like this has in politics now another point I want to talk about is how Boris Johnson is very good at maintaining a message so another point I want to talk about is how Boris Johnson is very good at keeping on message. You see here how he talked about uh, more nurses, getting Brexit done, uh, uh, was it more police officers on the streets, more trained up, whatever. Of course, none of this is true. There is nothing in place at the moment uh, to fix these problems. You know, and you have to remember that these problems were created by the Conservatives, by the last 10 years of austerity that was uh, implemented by the Conservative government. So any you know, fixing he's doing is undoing some of the damage. He's not making the situation greater than it was before the Tories got into power. So he's, in a sense, tinkering at the edges, but this is not radical change. You know, any of the fixing he's doing is just minor touches here and there. But even if even if there were some changes, it, it would be positive. But a lot of this is just lies. 
So this idea of getting Brexit done, what does it mean? You know, it's another empty slogan. The, the talks have just begun and you don't have anything to present yet. How can it be getting Brexit done? I, I, I struggle to respond to this because it's such an asinine statement to make. It, it's completely empty. It has no meaning. So it's very difficult to respond to. And maybe that's the power of it. It's a slogan. It's empty. Uh, you can't respond to it because it means absolutely nothing. And perhaps get Brexit done is the perfect slogan for Boris Johnson and his government because it means nothing and they mean nothing. They intend to do nothing. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you agree or disagree. Much appreciated as always. Thanks.